Hello friends, in last two videos of major phase, we are aware about need of statistics and some very basic concepts about which we are going to talk in major phase. As I already explained in introduction video on Six Sigma, it is an approach which working on the principle of firstly finding and then well defining practical problem. This practical problem then converted into statistical problem. We solve this statistical problem with various statistical tools and techniques and this statistical solution is then converted into practical solution. The major phase of the Six Sigma works on the portion of converting practical problem into statistical problem. Approach used in the major phase. In major phase, we firstly collect baseline data on defects and list down its possible causes. Here, defect can be an actual defect in product, process or undesirable variation in the process. The term baseline is used for current situation of the product or process performance. In next steps, we develop a sampling strategy to ensure we are having representative sampling and adequate sample size. It will be then followed by validating our measurement system using gauge R&R. Once we complete validation of our measurement system, we see the patterns in the data and determine its as is process capability. In this video, we are going to learn how to make data collection plan to collect the data as a first part of the major phase. So let's begin. Data collection plan. It is a process of seven steps to ensure effective data collection. Step one, start by collecting the questions to be answered and hypothesis related to the problem. Before we collect the right data, we must know what questions and hypothesis are relevant. In short, measurement must be read. That is relevant for the purpose. Does it measure the right thing? Adequate to find the desired changes. Can process changes be detected with the measurement system? Valid and consistent from time to time. Can a measurement be believed? And easy to make the measurement. For example, the questions will be like, what are the true dimension of the defect rate? Is the defect detectable in all product lines? And hypothesis or statement will be like, the problem occur more frequently on Friday Fluctuating supply quality causes the problem. Step 2. Define the x or y variables to be measured. After collecting and more clearly formulating the questions and hypothesis, define the x and y variables to be measured. Here, x variables means input parameters or KPIVs and y variable means output parameters or results also called as KPOVs. For example, we distinguish measurement categories for variables as error rate, cycle times or supplier quality and attributes such as line, product or weekday. Step 3. Create an operational definition for each variable. Let's understand first what is meant by operational definition. An operational definition is a description that establishes what is a parameter or characteristic being and how to measure it. An operational definition reduces doubt providing persons involved with the same understanding of the characteristic or parameter. It also describes the method for measuring the parameter or characteristic. Characteristics of an operational definition An operational definition is specific and concrete, measurable and sensible to us as well as our customer. Step 4. Reliability of the data After determining what we want to measure, we have to ask the questions like how and with what. For example, how reliable the data is? Was the data collected by machine or manually? Under what conditions are you going to measure? By what persons, with what experience and in what environment? Here, we must use the measurement system analysis methods to ensure reliability of the data. In the case of unique events, for example, administrative processes, evaluate the reliability of the data by analyzing the entire data collection process. Step 5. Determine the data quantity and time period for the data collection. After the reliability of the data has been ensured, determine the data quantity and time period for the data collection. The data quantity will be calculated using methods of power and sample size. In addition to this, the data should meet the standards of random sampling. We will see both of these concepts in the future videos of major phase. The time period is frequently determined by the data quantity required and the process. Here, 
we need to ensure that the realistic data collection process fits to our project time frame step 6 check whether our data meets all the requirements of tools used for analysis by outlining the subsequent data we need to check whether our data meets all the requirement of the tools used for the analysis of data for your initial projects discuss these requirements with an experienced black belt or master black belt please remember it's frequently quite difficult or expensive to correct the errors made in the planning phase and step 7 collect the data this is all about the data collection plan and steps in it we will be continue to learn some more concepts from the major phase in next videos for references asq site and isi site are very good references for this topic you can refer any of them for understanding it in more detail please like and share this video if you have found it useful to learn lean and six sigma in such an interesting way please do not forget to subscribe my channel and finally thank you for watching